Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Cheryl Peck, and I would like to welcome you to our webinar, Structural Integrity 3D Digital Environment Enables Aircraft Quality and Reliability, a collaborative webinar brought to you by SimData and Enline. Today, I'm joined by SimData's Director for Simu Simulation Driven Systems Development, Don Toll, who will be our host for this webinar. Don will be joined by Colonel Gary Steffes of the United States Air Force and Craig Reese, Enline's Vice President of Sales. During the webinar, we would like to hear your opinions and welcome your questions. To ask a question, please enter it into the GoToWebinar question panel, and we'll get to as many as we can following the presentation. Those we don't get to will be answered by email after the conclusion of the webinar. The webinar will be recorded. Now I would like to hand you over to my colleague, Don Toll. Don, over to you. Thank you, Cheryl, and welcome everyone to the webinar today. Um, we are joined today, as Cheryl said, by Lieutenant Colonel Gary Steffes of the United States Air Force, and he's going to be talking a bit about some applications that they've made of the inline analytics technology. Uh, that technology has been developed by a small company actually here in Cincinnati, Ohio, where I'm located. And I've known the founders and the main players there at Enline for quite some years. And uh, they are doing some very interesting things uh, in the industry now and are growing fairly rapidly in some of the adoption of their technology. So we're going to talk about today how this technology is being used in the aircraft industry, in particular for some of the applications that they have in the military that the Air Force has been involved in, and that's going to be the overview of what we talk about today. So uh, I'm not going to go in depth to my background. I just have this in here for uh, reference, but I have a long background in the simulation and testing and product development industry in the software product management and product development area. And so I work a lot with the companies in this space that provide technologies to industry. And we also, as a consulting group at SimData, work a lot with direct and customers who build products in automotive, aerospace, defense, medical equipment, et cetera. So we have a good perspective on both sides of the market because of our work. So again, I'm gonna give you just a bit overview on some of the things that we as SimData, as a consulting and market research and education firm see going on in the market and some of the, especially the trends around digitalization in this area of digital thread, digital twins, and some of the challenges and opportunities. Craig Reese from Enline Analytics uh, is gonna talk about their environment and kind of things they're doing with the technology that they've developed over the past decade. And then Gary, C Colonel Steffes is going to talk about their applications from the Air Force side. So as many of you know, you know we're, we're in a very interesting world now. There's many new aspects of digital technology, uh, social media, analytics, uh, and cloud, and all these things are coming together. And they've really had a big impact, probably more so in our, in our daily lives, in our, in our everyday personal lives. But now a lot of those same technologies in the Internet of Things and so forth are coming together and really impacting how we do product development. So it's really causing a lot of companies to rethink this whole idea of how we do engineering, how do we do product development, and this whole area of digitalization or digital transformation that you're probably hearing a lot about has really started with a lot of the companies that you probably know in your daily life like Amazon and Airbnb and Uber and Lyft and a lot of companies now that are emerging with totally new business models and making use of the internet and data and things that we didn't have today. So those things are previously, I'm sorry. And so today that, that is really having an impact too on how we think about uh, building products, maintaining products, and even how we look at products as a service. So the idea that I might be selling as a company the use of a product as opposed to that actual product being owned by the end user. So there's a lot of things going on in this space and in particular, for this area of digitalization in the engineering and product development space, we at SimData have been tracking a number of major trends over the last uh, you know, decade or so that are really starting to emerge in a big way now. Product innovation platforms, modeling and simulation platforms, this whole idea of model-based engineering, model-based systems engineering, in particular, how do we look at much more complex systems now that consist of hardware software and a lot of integrated electronics and technologies and even in the physical biological realms 
this area of digital thread and digital twins is, is really kind of what we're focusing on today. And then that whole area of smart connected products. How are, how are we looking at uh, the Internet of Things and, and Industry 4.0 impacting what we do? So again, this, this area of digital thread is something that's getting a lot of attention these days. So if we're going to have digitalization and use information across the product lifecycle and across the enterprise, including supply chain partners, this idea of a digital thread is very central to that. So the idea of data flowing across that thread is something that SimData has really been pioneering and been involved in since the, uh, since the 80s. And so this swoosh has been around for a long time, but it really does kind of represent this idea of the digital thread of how do we connect all this information from the very early stages of a product all the way up to its initial requirements, all the way through build, manufacture, simulation, test, validation, and in-service, and then maintenance and repair operations, which is a big part now of what you're hearing about in the world of IoT and II to IoT. So this digital thread, as we talk about it, really refers to that communication framework, uh, platforms that allow a connected data flow, and this integrated view of this assets data. So we have a physical product now that exists, that's, that's what we want to connect to its digital twin, uh, in, other, in other words, a virtual representation of that product. And we need to do that throughout its life cycle and across all the various engineering and business domains that exist within the company. So this digital twin concept has been around for quite some time, actually. In fact, about way back in the 90s, we were talking a lot about digital prototypes where we actually built uh, simulation models to assess the, the prototype, but now we've gone beyond the prototype definition and we're moving into the manufacturing, quality, development in service, operations kind of area where we want to be able to tie that digital representation, that virtual representation of the product to physical asset or assets, a group of assets, and that could be the product itself or it can even be the assets that are used to produce the product so production machinery, a plant, uh, anything that might exist that we want to be able to assess the performance of that system over its life cycle. And so there are many different kinds of div digital twins for that reason. And there really is never really a single digital twin. So we, we have digital twins that are often just analytics. They're data that comes from a, a sensor, if you will, on a product and we can analyze that data we can make some decisions off just trends in the data, but we also might have actual physical 3D models of that data, and that's kind of what we're going to be talking about today. We can even have 3D simulation models of those of those twins, or we can have even financial models. Uh, so in this case, we're, we're really looking at a lot of different kinds of twins, and the key is a twin is really supposed to have a physical asset that it's twinned to. That's the twin concept, right? So we really have to tie those things together. And as I said, it can be many kinds of things, a plant, a ship, infrastructure, such as bridges or whatever we might be building that we wanna understand how that physical object relates to the digital model and be able to make decisions on the digital model that will impact the physical assets. So that connection of data and communication of information between those two assets is a very critical concept of the digital twin. Now that data doesn't have to be real time. It doesn't have to be totally electronic in nature. There can be other forms of data that we're getting from that asset. And we're gonna talk about some of that today with the inline technology, but it's key that that data be connected and that we understand the relationships. So just to give you a feel, we do a lot of market research at SimData. We did a survey last year of a number of our people in our customer base. Um, the, the trend is, is clear. Uh, so at the time we did this back in uh, late 2019, the, uh, there was only about 11% of our companies that we talked with that were in production with a digital twin and 21% in pilots. So they're starting to be an awareness and people are starting to use them. But you can see the, the forecast when we asked people, where do you think that's going to be in three years? So that growth in production was up 3x and the growth in pilots is up 2x, the way people are seeing that. So the, the trend is clear. This is gonna become something that a lot more people are doing in their companies and, and looking at how they use the digital model to key, connect that with the information 
from the physical asset. And so this, this survey that we did really spanned a number of the discrete manufacturing industries, uh, not so much process power, those kinds of uh, companies, but auto and A&D and medical industrial machinery, high-tech electronics uh, were kind of the biggest participants in the survey. And we also asked them, where do you see the benefits of a digital twin? So this kind of shows you what people are thinking right now relative to the value of creating those digital twins. So again, this idea of collaborating across the engineering functions, how do we connect that information? How do we build better products right the first time and better understand the product? And that a lot of that is gonna come from having a better understanding of how the customer is using the product. So they may, the customer may be using my product in a totally different way than, than we ever anticipated. And therefore we didn't use those assumptions in terms of some of the simulation models we might have built for the load cases, the duty cycles and so forth. So that's the kind of thing now that we're gonna be closing the loop on. If you go take that information from the actual usage by a customer and loop that back to the engineering realm to make better decisions on how to, how to manage the product in, in service or even how to build a better version of the product. So a lot of these challenges uh, today that we're looking at uh, relate to some of the things that we're gonna be talking about here. So there's a lot of, a lot of new materials uh, being built, especially in the aerospace and defense industry with composites and new hybrid materials, but that really is happening almost everywhere now with additive manufacturing and new design process. We're coming up with new customized materials that don't have off the shelf characteristics that we can use in, in a model. So we have to, figure out how to make out assumptions, about, if you will, about what kind of materials characteristics my product has, and we have to be able to measure that and understand that. As I mentioned, all this idea of connected devices, so we have a lot more complexity with sensors and electronics and the kinds of things that are feeding data back to us now, and now we have to have a way to analyze that, that information. So we need to use that information not only in design and verification validation, but we need to move that into manufacturing, quality operations, in-service, and all those kinds of things that are downstream in that life cycle that we talked about. So this idea of applying modeling and simulation and analytics technology is very, very uh, key in the aerospace systems area, as well as many other industries, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later. But the key is now we're taking it out of the development realm and we're going into manufacturing quality and in-service operations. So related to that point, uh, as we talk about the Air Force today with Colonel Steffes and the things that Enline is doing, if you look at the aerospace and defense industry, just in the Department of Defense for the US, they have a, a huge budget that they spend on military system sustainment operations. So how do they keep the things that we build uh, for military operations working and functional and safe? So that 255 billion there was for last year, 2020, well, actually this fiscal year, 2020, which, which ended in, in October, so the end of September, and now, and the Air Force is 65 billion of that, okay? So for just the Air Force alone, they have approximately 5,400 aircraft in the fleet. And if you look at these numbers, that the challenge, and many of those are aging, Many of those have been around for a long time, as Colonel Steffes will mention, that B-52 is a classic example of that. So the, the uptime rate, the airworthiness rate of those aircraft uh, is, is, is lower than they would like, and certainly the trend line is not good. So the DOD has recognized that and are, are putting a big push into this area of digital engineering. And again, Colonel Steffes is gonna talk a little bit more about that later, and at the same time, the commercial aircraft industry has a lot of the same issues. So this uh, Oliver Wyman uh, Associates is a company that tracks the commercial airline and, and commercial freight and aviation industry. And you can see the amount of money that be, has being spent in that area as well for maintenance and, and sustainment operations is very significant. So there, there is a real value, if you will, of, of applying these kind of digital twin, digital thread technologies into this area of operations and sustainment of, of in-service equipment and systems. And so with that, uh, I'm gonna introduce Craig Reese. Wonderful. <clears throat> Thank you, Don. Appreciate the introduction. Uh, appreciate the time that uh, those of you that are on here are spending with us today. 
Let, let's talk just a, a moment here about uh, Enline and, and get uh, started in. If you'll, Enline as a company was fortunate to be started and originated inside the Air Force under a variety of cyber projects and recently was recognized as a success story through the, uh, the cyber programs for the aircraft uh, structural life cycle maintenance patents and our focus, specific focus on the A&D structural integrity community. We were also recognized by the Secretary of Defense's office as an innovative digital engineering solution in uh, 2018. The, uh, our, our product uh, has been recognized as well for demonstrating a 33% reduction in material review board or MRB labor hours for the F-35 Joint Striker program. And the customers of Enline primarily are inside the DOD or the DOD OEMs and supply chain, as well as commercial aviation. So here's a, a few of those names from the Air Force, the Navy, uh, Boeing, Northrop, KBR, Spirit, uh, Collins Air Force Base, et cetera. Don, if you'll advance slide here. So Don had talked about new technology that's evolved inside of the digital space from the Amazons and the Googles of the world. Enline originated in this area of tracking and identifying virtual GPS coordinates and mapping those to physical locations. So as you envision 20 years ago, trying to move through a city or a location with a Tommy guide or a, a large map that you were uh, folded in, in, in half and trying to find those, those actual physical locations didn't work very well. So with the uh, uh, evolution of GPS technology and Google Maps, we were able to move from a direct map or correlation from a virtual location and mapping that onto a, vis a physical location. So Don, if you'll go ahead there. So this is what Enline has done, is we've been able to take these specific locational damage, deformities, nonconformances on an aircraft that consist of cracks, uh, delaminations, dents, corrosion, repairs, and dozens of other items that are different from the manufactured aircraft to the as-maintained aircraft. So these discrepancies and artifacts are then collected and uh, the records are mapped from a, the physical asset to a digital record. This model can then be analyzed to produce predictive assessment root cause analysis, and even used into condition-based maintenance to understand the uh, aircraft that are still in the field. So if you look here on, on the right, as you see these, these uh, call-outs or these uh, locations of where those damaged items exist, inline tracks monitors this across an entire fleet so that you can start seeing those patterns of where those uh, locational damage issues are. Go ahead, Will Don. So, in doing that, we take a variety of different types of data, NDI data or manufacturing equipment data, machine data. Currently in the aerospace and defense community, there are still a lot of manual inspection reports and documents that are are being used to document specific uh, practices or requirements that are, are mandated by the FAA or by the governing bodies inside the Air Force or the Navy. We take those inspection reports and, and pull those into our environment. We take disposition analysis and historical repair information and we pull that information in. We take information that can be developed or pulled directly from a tablet or a um, Google Glass HoloLens, which we're working on in, a, in an R&D sphere right now to pull images directly from some of those type of tools. And we take just simply digital images or photographs, where you take a photograph of, of a, a wing or a fuselage or some other location on the aircraft and bring that into our system. These then are mapped to a 3D model in our interface, 
either through our direct uh, CAD interface or through dozens of other CAD interfaces that we directly work with to pull that data in. We work with uh, FEM models. The FEM model can be the specific uh, model where we're mapping this data to, or even 2D drawings, where we can map this locational information directly to those 2D drawings. This information then allows us to create the clustering to rapidly spot areas on the aircraft where there's reoccurring problems or reoccurring repairs or reoccurring locational information that can help us communicate that back up through the sustainment channel to drive down those sustainment costs that Don talked about earlier or to increase the availability of the aircraft out into the fleet. We are actively working with a variety of different PLM and MRO and MES environments to connect this data directly back into the manufacturing, the maintenance, or the engineering lifecycle environment so that you have one true authoritative source of data communicated throughout the life cycle of this asset. We are able through this to quickly and easily find part numbers and assemblies directly on the shop floor through uh, barcode scanning the items or from just a, a query or a search. You're able to go in and identify a specific part and see a visual representation of that part right uh, in this uh, in our environment uh, in the shop. We also have a variety of different reports, uh, prognostic charts that can aid in scheduling and budgeting decisions. As I mentioned earlier, areas like condition-based maintenance are becoming more and more prevalent, and the need to understand the aircraft prior to the aircraft coming in and being maintained to understand what's happening to that aircraft in the, in the field so that you can prepare adequately the machine and the sustainment environment for that aircraft. Don, if you'll go ahead. So a few of these uh, solutions uh, to discuss and talk about. The uh, fleet analysis allows you to create the visualization, a, a dashboard where you can modify and, and change and customize this based on your own need, as well as the environments that you're pulling in for that fleet analysis. In measurement, we're able to collect NDI data and organize that data by aligning that directly to the model so that you have an as-maintained asset in your model library. Disposition to connect these analysis and uh, reports directly back to the, the structural state and create that awareness for you. The, uh, I'd mentioned earlier the tech orders and the requirements that are presented in the A&D industry by the governing bodies, it becomes important to have these reports actually in the uh, inline environment. And so they can be completed and, and filled out uh, digitally as opposed to manually and collected and captured by mapping the physical location of that nonconformance directly onto the image or the model. The uh, document discrepancy, you can then complete these accurate tech orders and these uh, regulatory requirements in a digital environment. And then this provides you the ability to interpret that documentation much easier and much quicker as you have hyperlinks or other technical documentation, documentation that's directly correlated to that. Don, go ahead. This is an example of a corrosion detection solution framework on a project. There's a lot uh, here on this slide, but if you look and follow me from the top where you see in, in the uh, one here, the surface is inspected and corrosion is detected directly on the uh, asset. That then moves into end line, and number two here, where you capture that information, and it could be a crack on one of these uh, holes or a rivet that that information is then uh, moved into the number three here to create that digital twin of that damage and that corrosion data. Then uh, from there, you can bring that into an environment uh, like a PLM environment, in this case, a wind chill environment, where that data will be tracked, stored, and then pushed into uh, an analytical environment uh, like the uh, ANSYS uh, FEA packages for surface and structural analysis or the physics 
uh, to analyze the corrosion propagation and the rate of damage and tolerance analysis for that uh, digital twin. That then moves back into the data environment, the NTRED data environment that is connected to PLM environment to align the digital model and the analysis with the as manufactured and as maintained build of material for that repair execution, which is then passed back through into the IoT environments for so that you can uh, identify and see right through a HoloLens or a, a Google Glass or, or whatnot the uh, updated predictive maintenance uh, items. Don, go ahead if you will. So I'm going to share an example here from the Navy, and then we're I'm going to invite uh, Colonel Gary Steffes and, and bring him in and, and have him share a little more about our history in the Air Force and some examples. So in this spe specific example with the uh, Navy F-18, we identified a challenge with their aircrafts requiring substantial efforts in order to ensure that the structural integrity of the aircraft was maintained in, while in operation. There was a challenge to expedite the repair of dispositions while ensuring the integrity of the airframe stayed intact. And there was an issue with high turnaround uh, time of the engineering analysis and disposition in communicating that back and forth through operations. Through this process, Endline was able to help reduce the composites disposition labor hours by over 70% to reduce the aircraft on ground time that was due to the long engineering tap time and the repetitious workload man hours required to evaluate those damages. We were also able to, through uh, the dimensional locating of the damage, create the reference data and get that down to minutes, which thereby satisfied the requirement for providing layered reference data pertaining to the damage locations. Let me uh, now, I'm going to introduce to you Colonel Gary Steffes. Colonel Gary Steffes is in the uh, uh, mobilization augmentee to the deputy group commander for the 76th Commodities Maintenance Group at Tinker Air Force Base. This is a hat among many other hats that uh, Colonel Steffes wears. He was uh, fundamental to the development of this technology through the Air Force and bringing this out of the SIPR process into a productive commercialized technology. So with that, I'll turn it over to Colonel Steffes. Colonel Steffes. Uh, thank you very much, Craig. Um, as uh, Craig had mentioned, um, I'm actually a reservist and, and I'm currently acting in that capacity at Tinker Air Force Base currently. Um, but my civilian job is um, as an engineer in the Air Force Research Laboratory at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base uh, in Ohio. And as Craig had mentioned, you know, I've on the government side have been uh, with N-Line uh, since the beginning, um, really writing the original uh, CIBR, otherwise small business innovative research uh, topic um, for um, basically developing a capability to map uh, data onto models. And, and you know, from there, we were able to uh, develop an application and go forward and get, um, you know, subsequent uh, sponsorship uh, for additional uh, programs and um, basically developing the M-Line software as it is today. So um, with that, I'll, I'll go on to the next slide. Um, just, um, just to let you know what's going on at a higher Air Force and, and Department of Defense uh, level. Uh, there is a lot of um, effort in um, basically digital transformation uh, going on with really within the entire DOD at this point. Um, and, and here on the slide, you'll see the digital engineering ecosystem. And at the top, you'll see um, basically this is the, the Air Force acquisition process uh, from inception to design development to prototype development, um, then into production and then operations where um, the given asset is in service. So through, uh, that basically represents the entire life cycle of a weapon system. And the DOD is very much interested in um, uh, going forward with uh, basically transforming um, the way we do business um, within the digital uh, or within the engineering realm to a more digital uh, capabilities. Now the goals there are um, 
you know, as you see down the left side, um, developing, integrating, and using models. Um, that's one of the things that, you know, we're, we're trying to go to more model-based um, acquisitions um, instead of having to, you know, go through the, the you know, go through the costs of, of developing and testing prototypes, uh, try to do this in a model-based setting. Uh, the second one is authoritative source of truth. Um, the Air Force, uh, like many other um, organizations, large organizations out there, uh, have many IT systems. Uh, many of those IT systems um, are linked and are pulling data from other systems. Um, so you have a lot of data that is going back and forth. Uh, sometimes things get changed as, as they're represented in one system versus another. So there's always that issue of having that authoritative source of truth, um, having that one source that everything can pull from. So we're getting the, the, the best, uh, most accurate data in order to uh, you know, make decisions and go forward. Uh, the third is you know, incorporating uh, technological innovation uh, basically, how do we onboard uh, new IT system capabilities uh, such as Enline? Uh, the fourth, um, really, this is improving our infrastructure. You know, as we're going through this digital transformation, um, you know, we will be passing uh, digital data uh, back and forth between different systems within different functional areas, and and basically, this is just speaking to. Uh, ensuring that we have a network that is um, has the broad broadband uh, capability to handle that type of um, uh, all of those the resources that that we need in order to pass that data uh, back and forth. Um, the fifth is transforming our culture and workforce. Um, you know, as really our our culture is is really going digital. You know, things um, happen much faster pace. Um, you know, we have iPhones and, and you know, smartphones. Um, we have a lot of capabilities at the touch of our, our fingers. And, and really, you know, this is what our, our newer, younger generations, uh, they're growing up with this technology. So in a sense, you know, the Air Force and the DOD kind of need to keep up and improve our own digital capabilities so we can recruit um, newer, um, younger generations uh, to want to go into government service. Now on the right side, you'll see a snippet out of the, the DOD digital engineering strategy. Uh, it, it's within the third goal, incorporating technological innovation. And you'll see that end line was identified as a best practice currently in use uh, by the A-10 uh, weapon system program. Uh, we can go to the next slide, which is the enterprise data concept. Um, really what Enline has helped us do was uh, basically bridge a communication gap that was between our maintenance and our engineering areas. Um, you know, unfortunately, a lot of the, the things that we, we were doing in the, on the shop floor um, in the maintenance areas were a lot of manual paper-based uh, methods for recording findings, um, things that we were um, basically identifying on aircraft while we were doing maintenance. And, and since those were paper-based, um, you know, we really didn't have a lot of uh, good communication between um, the technicians who are doing the work and the engineers who are responsible for managing uh, those assets. So converting this to electronic and then building in the capabilities that we have um, to map data onto models, um, give us the trending capabilities, looking at assets and how they change over time um, has really helped um, both the maintainers and the engineers um, with their daily business. And um, right now for the future, you know, we would like to extend that within the Air Force um, to these other functional areas um, such as supply chain. Um, I name a few of them here, operations. Um, these are the people that actually fly our aircraft. Um, and then acquisitions as we do uh, new modifications uh, to the aircraft or to the asset. You know, how do we um, take that data and, and basically do the same um, mapping and trending um, capabilities and basically leverage what we have within Enline to do those um, 
uh, particular tasks. And really, you know, what Enline has done is helped us extend data that was um, pretty much isolated in pockets within the engineering or maintenance realms and, and push that to other functional areas that also help their business processes. And overall, that's really helped, I mean, across the board, analysis, decision-making, forecasting, I, I have them named there on the, on the right side. But we're trying to basically proliferate this into other areas uh, to help their business pra practices as well. We can go to the next slide. And then here I just, I'll, I'll conclude with a couple of uh, success stories and, and just show you the benefits um, that we've had from using online. Uh, this one happens to be at the, within the A-10 program at Hill Air Force Base. Um, aging aircraft is a, is a thing that we live within, within the Air Force, um, but it's, it's really DOD wide and we're managing fleets and assets beyond their original intended design life. So, you know, how do we, um, basically collect the data and and do make the most of the analysis and, and the models and, and all the things that we have in order to extend our asset lives. Um, and, and I mentioned this paper-based um, inspection system that they were doing on the shop floor. Uh, you know, there was a lot of miscommunication. Um, technicians were filling out paperwork. Um, at some point, you know, some of that paperwork does end up at the engineer's desk. And uh, on the slide, it, it does show there, sometimes it could take seven to nine months for that paperwork to uh, get to the engineer. And in some cases, um, at that point, the aircraft had already left Hill Air Force Base back to its operational base. So there really wasn't much the engineers could do at that point. Uh, but in some cases, you know, when the engineers would actually look at um, what the technicians were annotating on their forms, um, it, it wasn't very usable. Um, you know, it, it didn't communicate the right things that it needed to. And unfortunately, the, the quality of our inspection records um, at that time, back in 2017, were, you know, we, we say 17% good. And, and really what this refers to, you know, when I say 17% good, that basically means the engineers could take that form uh, what the, the inspectors or what the technicians had wrote, written and really use that to do um, no kidding fleet management and analysis. Now, um, we also had something where we were saying usable with assumptions where some of these forms were usable, but sometimes the engineers would have to make assumptions on, on some particular aspect or another. And then um, finally, the, the, the paper copies um, were good, which meant that the engineer could um, basically use whatever data was on that form. And with the use of Enline, we really, um, really increased the quality of the data that we were collecting on the shop floor. You know, converting it to an electronic means um, really helped the communication between the technicians and uh, the engineers and um, you know, technicians were able to get essentially real-time feedback um, in, in order to improve the, the data that they were collecting. And, and for a time when we were teaching our technicians how to use Enline, um, we were actually having them enter some of the, the paper records, um, legacy paper records um, into the system. And um, they, they could easily see where, you know, sometimes that data wasn't necessarily clear. Um, some of these technicians were entering data that, that they had entered on a form, you know, nine months, a year and a half ago. And, and even in some of those cases, they couldn't understand it. So it really gave them a feel for what the engineers were going through uh, when they were um, basically trying to um, understand the data or the information that was on that form. So again, Enline has really helped us in that way. And I think that the numbers, um, you know, you'll see the, the, a huge rise in the data quality. And it really, a lot of that is attributed to the capabilities within the software itself. Just that ability to um, map data onto a model, um, do that visualization, um, it really cuts down on, on a lot of the confusion um, that could possibly transpire between a maintenance environment and an engineering environment.
you know, we can identify findings um, at a particular point. Um, we can show it on the model, and an engineer can, um, you know, basically zero in at that location and glean the information and the data that they need to in order to make their decisions. So um, we'll go to the next slide. Um, from the C-130 and F-15 at uh, Robbins Air Force Base, um, this one um, is, is really coming more from the, the shop floor. Um, you know, we do have um, a requirement within the maintenance environment to uh, basically retain our maintenance records uh, for a certain period of time. Um, it was uh, two years, it has gone up to seven years, and, you know, to, to help in case any, any issues were to arise while that aircraft was in service. So um, what they are doing at Robbins is basically using N-Line uh, not only to um, help them, uh, you know, map data in order to interpret um, the current state of whatever asset it is they're inspecting, but they're also using it as that uh, maintenance data, um, data record retention. And, you know, one of the great things with the software, you know, Craig had talked about mapping um, photographs, uh, but you can also map other types of data. Uh, and that's one of the things that they're actually currently exploring right now uh, with NDI or non-destructive inspection uh, data, uh, both point-based, which is a, a typically a typical um, eddy current probe or ultrasonic probe, uh, for those of you familiar, or image-based systems, more like X-ray images or um, C-scan images, and mapping that type of data onto a model as well. And then, of course, you always get the trending capabilities uh, that you would uh, with the baseline software, um, the capabilities that everyone can use. Um, and they've, they, you know, they've just stood this up, um, you know, at the start of this year, and they're already starting to see the benefits um, from that. Um, just getting a better state awareness of what their assets, you know, what they're looking at, because in some cases, they're actually using multiple modalities in order to um, assess an asset or inspect it. And having the, the capability of overlaying all of that data onto a model um, using the software is a great benefit to them. And, you know, that's something that will, you know, ultimately improve their industrial process control, um, you know, by eliminating any kind of transcription errors because, um, like like A10 uh, at Hill Air Force Base, that was largely a paper-based uh, manual system, and it's very difficult to uh, take multiple modalities of data and and try to you know have have a technician or someone uh, basically interpret all of that data and and try to get a, a thorough understanding in order you know to decide whether a part or an asset needs to be reworked. Um, rejected, possibly condemned, or whether it's um, airworthy and can be put back on an aircraft. Um, I think that's my last slide. Um, I believe the next slide is um, uh, future developments, um, and I was going to turn that back over to Craig. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you, Colonel Steffes. Appreciate uh, your time there. So, I want to talk just a, a brief moment here about the future developments of the inline technology in conjunction with our work with the Air Force, with the Navy, and our other commercial customers. We're working with augmented reality to track and uh, remove some of the, the needs to manipulate the 3D views. So this will uh, free up the technician's hands to be able to still allow them to uh, create this electronic data capture in a virtual environment. We're also working on registering uh, ultrasonic waveforms that will help improve the capture of the systems that are lacking 3D reference frames. This will then, uh, these ultrasonic scanning scenarios will then help to understand the uh, arbitrary configurations of that, uh, of that asset. Along with that, we are developing enhancements into our environment that will enable the data to be extracted from a database 
by using custom logic provided by the end user. So these are a few of the things that we're, we're addressing and working toward to further enable the capture, the, the acquisition of data, the analysis of this data, so that the as manufactured asset is the same as the as maintained asset, so that individuals can, with this better data, can make better decisions and help our warfighters return. So with that, I'll turn it back over to you, Don. Thanks, Craig, and thanks, Colonel Steffes. A great overview. Uh, so just to wrap up here, um, you know, we talked a lot about digital twin at the start, and essentially that's what you're seeing in terms of the technology that Enline has developed and is applying with their customers. So, you know, I mentioned that, uh, you know, a lot of this uh, work on the digital threat has been very much on the front end of the process, if you will. So the, a lot of people are still spending pretty heavily on CAD and CAE and conceptual design and design development, uh, but there's a lot of business value uh, in these downstream areas uh, of manufacturing and quality and in-service. And you see the number, the kind of numbers that the DOD and the Air Force is dealing with, as well as the commercial airline industry. And I guess, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, you know, if you think about, you know, this kind of technology, it certainly, has a lot of application to other industry areas as well. So if you think about any high value uh, assets that are in service, things like uh, big turbines or machinery in a, an industrial plant or a power plant or any kind of process, oil and gas, those kind of things like offshore platforms, especially where these systems have real mission critical uh, aspects where a failure is really a very catastrophic kind of thing, uh, similar to what to an aircraft when it, when it goes down, right? So uh, there's a lot of untapped areas, I think, across the industry where this kind of technology uh, can be applied. And there are digital twins being built, you know, in those areas, but a lot of them don't have this aspect of having the connection to the real maintenance and in-service data. So that, that is really an area that we see really emerging quite uh, heavily over the next three to five years. You know, everybody, is, as Colonel Steffa says, DOD, and everyone is going to more of a model-based uh, environment, getting away from documents, getting away from paper, so that people can collaborate around a single source of truth. As Craig mentioned, uh, the, the new technologies like artificial reality, virtual reality that Craig just mentioned, uh, you know, AI and machine learning, once you have a lot of this data, now you can apply some of those kind of things to the data to make it even more valuable and to get more information out of the data so that it can be presented to the decision makers, the engineers, as in a form that they need it. And we see a lot of promise for AI and machine learning in that area. So, so that kind of, you know, is, is a summary of where we see inline analytics today. They're certainly doing a lot with DOD and the aerospace industry, but as I mentioned, any kind of systems that have these kind of life cycle, structural integrity issues, and especially where things like safety and reliability and, and, and uptime, if you will, and, and really just reducing total life cycle costs is really key. So if we go back to that digital thread concept that I talked about earlier, now we kind of have in the center of all that, kind of tying all this together is the Internet of Things, uh, industrial Internet of Things, often called Industry 4.0. But really, those these enabling technologies of data analytics and AI and ML and even artificial reality are really enabling a lot of things. And so as we've talked about inline, this is really, you know, if you look at the green area here, this is kind of really their focus. So, so they're connecting with the information that might come from the engineering and the simulation areas, as Craig mentioned, the ability to tie that data back to CAD models or CAE models, but they're really working on how do they take that data from the real world and apply it to uh, the, the, the digital thread, if you will, so that people can make decisions and improve the performance of things as they are manufactured as well as, as they are operated. So that's really the focus of what they're doing today, and uh, it's very interesting. And uh, right now, Cheryl, I'd like to open it up to Q&A. Okay, Don. Yes, we have a couple of questions to get through, um, actually several questions to get through in the next uh, few minutes. Um, the first question, I think this probably should go to Craig. Um, 
how do you tell what information is relevant versus what is outdated? Wonderful question, Cheryl. So as you can imagine with some of these aircraft that have 40, 50 years worth of, of information, there's a lot of uh, data that uh, is, is unimportant. Uh, the data that we find is, is, is most important to be able to track and configure and pull is data that uh, ties directly back to uh, the asset, uh, locational damage, the type of, of damage, uh, loads, uh, items that uh, can then be uh, uh, ingested in to create these reports and these dashboards that can be used by, by engineering. But Inline has a very systematic uh, way of uh, ingesting this uh, data through uh, tables and other uh, forms so that you can simplify the data that is non-relevant with that that's relevant. Great, thanks a lot, Craig. Um, the next question, probably again, you're you're probably the best to answer this. Um, we noticed on your slide, one of your slides, that um, there was a linkage to ANSYS and Windchill, or at least the logos were on those slides. Um, would an implementation also allow um, other softwares like Team Center, Novio, or Aris to be aligned with the analysis tool? Great question. So that example was just a a corrosion example that uh, we uh, were working through. We we actually have an active uh, a project with the Air Force with the Team Center PLM environment. Uh, we're actively working with uh, Aris and uh, Novia uh, as well as ANSYS and PTC. So all of these uh, simulation uh, PLM CAD environments, uh, we're actively engaged with them in and many of them in, in some process of, of integration projects. Great. Next question, and we do have a few more to get through. Um, we already have an in-house customized solution. What value would Enline add to this? So I'll take uh, that, uh, Cheryl. So we uh, often see this is the case. Most uh, companies will have some uh, uh, in-house solution uh, that consists of a QMS, MRO, MES environment or a, a homegrown environment. Inline can sit inside of, of those environments, uh, can add to uh, pieces of inline, can uh, can overlay in some of that environment. But often what we've seen is, is companies have an embedded uh, environment that they've maintained and it's outside of their core competencies. And so they are uh, uh, very excited to see that there's a commercially available product that can help um, add some value there. But as I'd mentioned, our, our product can be modulized such that we can uh, work uh, very well with in-house solutions as we're doing currently with a no number of the OEMs. Great. Um, Colonel Staffus and Don, if you wanted to add anything to any of the answers given so far, um, would, you, would either of you like to do that? Yeah, in fact, I, I was just about to um, respond to what Craig uh, mentioned before, um, and and you know the the flexibility um, that we have with the the online software is is a great advantage to us within the Air Force. Um, you know when we have nine different weapon systems that that actually use online, and and when I look across the board across the enterprise, all of them use it slightly differently, and um, you know that's that just speaks to the the fact that you know it's it's not a one solution fits all uh, kind of thing. Uh, you know it speaks to what Craig was saying about modular, um, you know user customizable, um, which are great features uh, within the software, um, really to make it adaptable um, to whatever environment that we have. And within the Air Force, we have you know many different environments. You know, given the different uh, weapon system programs. Uh, a lot of that is really attributed to the age of the weapon system. You know, B-52, that acquisition program happened in the 1950s. Um, their current state of, of uh, digital IT um, is very different than, say, an F-35 or an F-22. So just the fact that we can use it across the board, um, you know, is, is, is a great benefit to us. Over. Thank you. So carry on, please. <laughs> sure, um, I just, do you have any? 
Yep, so, done. Yeah, I just want to mention that we're in the process of developing developing a commentary white paper uh, with NLINE, and we'll be publishing that here within the next uh, two weeks. And so if you're interested in more information on that, certainly you can reach out to Craig. Uh, he, he'll provide you with more background, but also keep an eye. Uh, we'll be publishing that. Uh, if you're part of our SIM data mailing list, you'll see that come out uh, probably within the next uh, 10 days or so. So keep an eye out for that, and uh, that'll provide you with also a little more background on what we talked about today. Okay, um, back to the questions. Um, how does Enline work in conjunction with enterprise software systems such as PLM, R MRO, and ERP, and the product data that is archived in those systems? Craig, is this for you great, again? Great. Yeah, great, great questions. So Enline integrates uh, with these with these other software solutions by taking the uh, the specific uh, asset information that we've collected and acquired into a, a data uh, storage environment, proprietary data storage environment that uh, Enline has. That uh, data storage environment is then connected back into these uh, uh, enterprise uh, systems so such that the uh, data that is needed is able to be contributed and, and uh, directed into those systems and the data that is benign or, or not necessary for those operations is, is able to be um, you know, stored outside of that. But uh, we would love, we've got a number of projects that are currently going on, so uh, please uh, reach out to us if you've got a specific application that you'd be interested in, in looking at an integration project on. Sounds good. Um, we've got time for one last question, and actually this one is, I've seen this has actually come in in a couple of variations from a couple of people. All our data is text-based. It's in spreadsheets, um, PowerPoints, 2D drawings, legacy databases, etc. How do we get started towards moving towards a 3D digital environment such as Enline? Another great, great question there. So the the starting point is to identify the uh, 2D, 3D, FEM, the, the model where this data is going to be located on. Once they, you have that model, we can ingest a variety of different types of data in, be it uh, spreadsheets, be it uh, uh, machine uh, environments, uh, analysis dispositions, and bring that data directly into Enline through a variety of, of tools and, and uh, features that we have. We do actually provide uh, services as well that can uh, assist and support companies that are looking for a jump start to create a, an environment where they can start looking at their data. Uh, we will actually uh, provide that uh, jump start to assist that, that process. Thanks, Craig. Um, on behalf of SimData and Enline, I'd really like to thank everybody for joining us today. Um, I, I know you've got a lot of choice in webinars, and we're really pleased that you you chose this one. Um, Enline sounds like it's a very exciting solution and a very exciting company. And as Don mentioned, uh, over the next 10 days, look out for uh, a commentary that delves into this even more. Thanks to everybody, and um, we hope to see you at another SimData webinar. <laughs>